Welcome to the July Said News, like a top stories in crypto, and bringing out a bite-sized piece. So today, just like the thumbnail suggests, September, the last week of September, might be one of the toughest. We're going to take a look at uh, some key indicators of why that might be. So first, we're going to take a look at a news story that broke uh, featuring Anthony Scaramucci, the mooch, where he talks about how uh, institutional investors really aren't there. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, the story behind the story as far as JP Morgan or Jamie Dimon, what he says as far as uh, fools investing into Bitcoin. Then we're going to break it down in some on-chain data, some analytics. Then we're going to take a look at uh, what I think is the most concerning uh, issue right now, which is whale games. Look at some data on-chain as well, uh, what's going on. And then finally, we'll go over... Uh, the retirement story follow up, which I think is uh, another big scary thing uh, that's been going on. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today is, as expected, not a great day, uh, not a great week, not a great month. September has been sucking. Let's just be, uh, let's call a spade a spade. We've got uh, 1.84 trillion as far as a market cap down uh, almost 4% for the day. Bitcoin price still holding okay, 41,650. The sentiment is amazing to me. Bitcoin daily sentiment, 85 over 100. It's like people in this space just don't care. They're like, you know what? We've seen the ups and downs. We know what's happening and we just are ready. So just bring it because we don't care about this week. We don't care about next week. We are in it for the long haul, or at least a lot of people are. But I think there's things to be concerned about. And on this channel, I don't just give you the rah rah hopium stuff. I try to give you both sides of the story so you can make a more informed decision. So if we take a look at uh, just how far down we are as far as uh, the coins themselves. Uh, Bitcoin, I'll talk about Ethereum, uh, 2849, slip below the 3000. Tether is now in the third spot. The reason why is because people are what's called tethering up. They are selling off some parts of their crypto, getting them tether. They're staying in crypto essentially because uh, Tether's. Uh, uh, pegged to the dollar, and they're waiting for this dip to uh, play out, and we'll see how that works. Cardano down, I think it's uh, two dollars and eight. It might slip below two bucks. I'm not surprised. I hope I could pick some up. Uh, XRP, ninety one cents. Watch out. Uh, One thirty one for Solana. Everything's just down. Jeez, eight percent for Solana. That's a pretty big dip, I must admit. Eleven uh, percent for Terra. That was pretty hot not too long ago. Four percent, six percent for FTX. Hey, Bitcoin Cash is up 13%. Go figure. And Axie Infinity, 4%. That is a great play right there if you could go on that. So that's what's going on in the market. Let's just break into today's top stories. This one's a little bit more difficult and more involved to really bring things all together. So I'll try to do my best here as far as what's going on. So this first one here, it's uh, with uh, the Mooch, Anthony Scaramucci. Uh, used to be uh, uh, White House press secretary. And uh, of course, before that, he was a big investor. He is the CEO of Skybridge Capital. And he says, look, institutions aren't there, even though uh, he himself and his company are getting into the cryptocurrency game. So here is what is going on. Uh, Scaramucci or the Mooch stated that according to his experience, experience, only 10% of the institutional world is actively investing in crypto. According to Scaramucci, it's a minority that has some impact, just some. He states the institutions are not there. Anybody who's telling you there's institutional adoption into this space is not being totally honest, or they're seeing something that I'm not seeing. I think in this situation, Scaramucci is in this traditional finance space, and he talks to a lot of people, and he knows what he's talking about. I have, I have no doubt about that. Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you can make your own assumption about why, but I think the mooch kind of has his own downfall, just like I do. I think everybody's like me, and I kind of see the world in a certain way, but I really have a fatal flaw. It's not seeing people uh, as they are, or not seeing the, uh, the situation a little bit better. And that's why I try to give the most information I possibly can. So here's a prime example with uh, Mike Novogratz. So Mike, um, you know, Galaxy Capital, he says, look, I spoke to, uh, this was a, a tweet on August 15th. He goes, I spoke to 20 of the smartest people I know in the space and zero of them saw Cardano having traction with devs. And I can understand Mike, Mike got in early with Ethereum. So of course he wants Ethereum to do well. I want Ethereum to do well. It is like my second or third hold, depending on the day and how well it goes up or down. Uh, but uh, I own a lot of other cryptocurrencies as well. And that's, that's Mike because he sees it a certain way. He talks to certain people and he's in a bubble. And then on top of that, we can just see that this was a tweet I sent out on September 21st called Proof of GitHub. And it talks about GitHub daily development activity for developers. Number one, Cardano, 
two is Kusama, three is polka dots, number four Gnosis, Status, Ethereum, Solana Channel. Like, great, right? So that was just on September 21st. But you know, just so you realize this, if you go to Proof of GitHub, it changes uh, all the time. So uh, this was uh, from a friend of uh, the show, Ada Ape. And he goes, look, he goes, uh, it's nice to see someone else being number one. And uh, this was during the uh, Cardano Virtual Summit. And you can see that uh, Ethereum is number one. Those developers are cranking it out. Solana, Kusama, Polkadot, MDX, and Ethereum is not even, or excuse me, Cardano is not even there. And the reason is, because all the developers and else was in the space as far as the Virtual Summit. So that makes a lot of sense. Now this one, Proof of GitHub, just came out two hours ago, September 28th, which is today. And again, Cardano, Ethereum, blah, 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 still up, up top. So when we take a look at these things, we just got to take it with a grain of salt and go, you know, I know Scaramucci's in the space. I know Mike's in the space, but it's kind of sometimes like we're in this echo chamber and we're talking to the people that we want to talk to and seeing the things that we want to see. And some of the things I'm going to tell you today, you're probably not going to like, but uh, you have to get both sides of the story. Anyhow, to continue on, uh, Scaramucci says instruments like ETFs will play a major role. We'll get in that in a second. I personally think that an ETF will not be approved anytime soon. I've been hearing this forever. And with uh, Gensler in the, in the house, uh, SEC, I just don't see how uh, that would actually happen. But if it does, it will uh, put a lot of capital into crypto. He states uh, institutionals, or the article states, institutions still have reasons to be weary or wary of investing in crypto. Some maintain there is no clear regulation in the sector. And if there was, we would have ETFs. We would have had a lot bigger play. It's just that they're dragging their feet, and that is just in America. In any case, there's been an increase in intention and attention to crypto from big institutional firms like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and Fidelity, among others, and have started offering crypto service to their customers. So even though Mooch is talking about, like, look, there's not that much going on. I think there's a, lot, a little bit more than what he may lead us to believe. And that leads me to my next point. So we're talking about all this stuff. Remember that there's a lot of institutional and players getting into the game. And a lot of these places can't get directly into crypto, but they can get into it by proxy. Because just like we talked about, with re if there was regulatory clarity, I'm telling you we would be at three, four, five trillion dollars right now. But because these institutions can't and their customers don't like to play in this in this arena because it's so volatile, they get into it by proxy. So this was from uh, Bitcoin Magazine. Morgan Stanley doubled down on the grayscale Bitcoin, which, you know, grayscale, the Bitcoin, uh, it's not the exact Bitcoin. It's a paper Bitcoin, essentially. And uh, the bank owns 58,000 shares up from 20,000 last quarter. So they know where this space is going but they can't get into it uh, any other way. Also on top of that, we take a look at places like BlackRock. BlackRock is a uh, major institutional player with nine trillion assets under management. And uh, a mandatory SEC filing dated June 30th shows that BlackRock has stakes in two Bitcoin mining companies, almost 7% in Marathon or Mara, which I own myself, and uh, almost 6.6 well, .6 in Raya blockchain. Total capital commitment is almost 400 million between both miners, again, this isn't a lot of money for these big, huge players because they can only get in so much. But I'm telling you, if there was clarity, we would be a lot farther along. And I think this is going to lead to a showdown coming up. So that is what we have as far as the first story. Now let's jump into the story behind the story as far as JP Morgan, what he says as far as people buying Bitcoin are fools. So JP or Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan, he stated that... Uh, that whoever borrowed money, <laughs> this is pretty funny, to purchase Bitcoin was, in his opinion, a fool. However, his personal opinion has not clashed the fact that JP Morgan, the company that he runs, now has access or is offering six crypto funds for its customers and even created its own digital ledger token for payments called the JP Morgan coin. So it's kind of like the, it's, it's like the CEO is at odds with what his company is offering and what his customers demand. It's not Jamie Dimon's or any CEO's job to determine what people want. It's to give them what they want and move forward. So I uh, just don't see what, I just don't, I don't understand why he's, he's clinging onto this because he's offering it to him. And he states, um, he goes, look, I'm not a buyer of Bitcoin. I think if you borrow money to buy Bitcoin, you're a fool. And however, <laughs> he also acknowledged there is the possibility that the crypto sector could increase its value tenfold 
in the next years. And this was actually a, a meme that's been going around in the Twitterverse, crypto Twitter, uh, everywhere. And this was the, I even I retweeted this. It says, Jamie Dimon says, if you're stupid enough to buy Bitcoin, you'll pay the price one day. This was on 2017. And then of course, this is the only part that we see is Bitcoin price could 10X in the next five years. Not the other part of what he says. He goes, you're still, you know, it's ridiculous to own it and blah, 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 blah. But it's still gonna go up majorly. So really, if you look at it and you really wanna take the best parts of it, you gotta say, well, Jamie, uh, if you think it's gonna go up 10X, I'll go with that. And if you can keep offering it, that's great. And if whatever you think about it being a fool, I suppose I'll be a fool if I can 10X. I don't think I can get that with uh, the S&P 500, the Dow or bonds or something like that. And uh, that's what I see. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And let's move on to a little positive news as far as on-chain data before I get to a little bit of negative. So on-chain data is pretty good to look at and it kind of eases our fears and kind of takes a look and cuts the noise because math is true. Data is true. Well, not all data is true. The internet is the internet, right? But as far as like on-chain data, um, this is, is uh, you know, pretty good as it gets as far as like what we want to see. So this is the unique addresses for all Bitcoin wallets. And if we take a look at this, we can see that. And if we look at just how many wallets are out there, uh, and we just and we, we just extrapolate that by Metcalf's law. I know people talk about it all the time, but really, if you think about it, the more people are actually using a product, the more valuable it usually becomes because it is the uh, network effect as people open up all these new addresses, these new accounts, and things just kind of start rolling from there. But what I want to make mention of this is, yes, over here, we see we're coming up, but see this right here, these new unique addresses for uh, uh, Bitcoin wallets. Right over here, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you can't. Let me let me bring this up a little bit. This part right here, where it's at the very tip top, that is November 29th, 2017. That was not the top of Bitcoin price action. Bitcoin price actually, I think it topped out like the third week of December, something like that. So even though we're at the tippy top, tippy top of unique addresses, the real action didn't come until two or three weeks later. And then we take a look over here. This is June 16th, 2019, another big inversion, or June 22nd. We didn't see action or fireworks for the Bitcoin price until about a month or two later. And then that, then the actual unique, unique addresses went away. And then I want you to see this, our la latest one. January 6, 2021, that is at the peak of the last unique addresses used. And as we know, we didn't get anything as far as like real price action, real explosion until around middle of April. That was like, you know, three months or so, uh, three, four, well, three, three and a half months or so later. And now there was a big drop off as people sold off. And now look what we have again, another increase of unique addresses. And it's not just Bitcoin. I mean, we take a look at the, the Ethereum addresses as far as like unique addresses, it's the same thing going, but it's even more relevant. And we can just see that the unique addresses as far as like uh, Ethereum, just going through the roof. And then if we take a look at just how many people are actually staking. Just let's just take a look at staking for Ethereum 2.0, which isn't even going to be out yet until 20. Well, the third, the third leg of it won't be out until 2022. If we take a look at uh, 30 days, let's take a look at stakers. It's pretty much just going a straight line up. Everybody is staking, and then with with Cardano or excuse me, with Ethereum, everything just goes up, and that's locked in. That's not coming out until Ethereum 2.0 launches again probably mid to late 2022. So that's uh, as far as like a pretty good sign as far as the belief of cryptocurrency. Now, let's take a look at Cardano. A little bit different because with Cardano, uh, there's no slashing and uh, you can take it out anytime you want to. However, we take a look at stakers, same type of thing. We're just going up and up and up and there's a little bit of dips here and there, not too many. Then people are just going up because people are staking and they see the value. Why is there such a huge inversion right here september 25th well we had that uh virtual conference i think that got people excited and they started to uh start to stake more i saw an increase in my stake pool which you can find over at dan crypto.com how to stake as far as with the d new stake pool but again looking pretty good as far as staking well it's a little bit different for something like uh, let's take solana solana great project a lot of things going on when we take a look at the stakers themselves over the last 30 days 
you can see that it's pretty jagged, but it is kind of going up, but it goes down and up and down and up. So as far as staking, as far as with Solana, not too convinced on that one yet. Still think it's a great project, but if you take a look at the Ethereum Cardano, things are looking pretty good. So there is just that piece as far as like good data. And then if we take a look at, this is from Into the Block. Average time Bitcoin is held is 3.3 years out of all the different addresses that is there. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I've been holding most of my Bitcoin since 2017. So I fall within that category. But if you even break it down even more and we take a look at, I think it's ownership by time held. Holders are people who hold for a year or, or more in the blue. As far as like going back a year or so, it's the majority. More people are holding their, at least their Bitcoin for a quite a long time as opposed to getting rid of it. And the more that you hold, the more it takes it off the exchanges, the more, of course, there's going to be demand and the price should go up. However, just hasn't done that so far. Now we take a look at just the basics of like this new uh, partnership or uh, El Salvador actually getting into the game as far as cryptocurrency. Did you know that uh, as far as the amount of users, 2.2 million El Salvadorians have opened up a Chivo account, which is their... Uh, wallet for Bitcoin. So they are actually getting into the game. And remember, in El Salvador, you're looking at around four to five million as well, about four and a half million as far as the population. And out of that four and a half million, you got 2.2 million that have actually opened up an account uh, for Bitcoin. That's a pretty good sign. I'll take it. And then also another good uh, little piece of data. This is all miners to all, ex all exchanges transactions. And this is really hard to see. I can Let's see if I can blow it up a little bit. Ah, there we go. So just so you know, when the miners are Bitcoin mining or mining all this stuff and they dump it on the exchanges, usually, usually the price will go down a little bit. See right here, we had a little big uh, dump right here. Price went down a little bit, but it came right back up. And then it kind of goes jagged and then off it goes. But right here, lately, if you can see it, ah, there we go. There hasn't been a lot of miners selling their Bitcoin to the exchanges. They're holding on to it. And of course, more people that hold on, creates more demand, price usually goes up. And then lastly, I just wanna leave you with something like this as far as the good news. I know that the price action hasn't been the greatest and I can't tell you that uh, there's going to be like everything fantastic. But if we take a look at just like how much money there is sloshing around the world I, I, I show this all the time, but it's a good recap just to make sure we all know. This little square is $100 billion. And then gold is $11 trillion. Why couldn't we get, I don't know, 25% of that? It only makes, I mean, I don't see why not. How about uh, playing in the stock markets? Stock markets, that's about a, almost, well, it's $100 trillion now. Why couldn't we see 10% of that? Money supply, eh, global debt, yeah, sure. And then how about global real estate, tokenizing real estate? I only see that makes that makes sense as time goes on. We can tokenize art, uh, so why couldn't we do this? We can tokenize a lot of things. And then global wealth, there's $360 trillion sloshing around. And then derivatives, I mean, geez, options, futures, forwards, swaps, uh, that's that's over a quadrillion, which I didn't know that number existed until I saw this uh, this chart. So if you look at all this stuff, all the money sloshing around, and we're here, that's cryptocurrency at under two trillion dollars i just don't see how we don't get a bigger piece of this pie coming down and that is the good news now as far as i'll have to give you the other part which is the whale games and the whale games that i stole that from george cryptozoros thanks george and uh this is what i came across so this is from crypto quant let me blow this up so just like we talked about the price has been going down and why is that this is a uh, all exchange whale ratio, oh, it's way too big, per se. And what this is, it's the relative uh, size of the top inflows uh, for all exchanges. The number increases means an increase in selling pressure from whales. So uh, as whales start to uh, put their crypto onto the exchanges, then usually, uh, sometimes I would say, you see a, a reduction in price. So we can see it here, we can see it here, price goes down. Price goes down the second one in the third ring. They do it again. Price goes down. And then what happens over here? Uh, one, two, three. And the last one, everywhere that they've put it on there, the price has gone down, down, 
this one actually went up. I, should, I take that back. This one kind of went sideways down a little bit. And now we're there, whales are doing it again. But you kind of see, actually, if you look at this a little closely, you can kind of see that the whales don't have the effect that they used to, but it does happen a little bit. And the problem with having a mark cap of 2 trillion, this is the problem, uh, is that things just are easy to manipulate. So, um, again, I think that uh, this last week is going to be kind of sucky. Uh, I know this month isn't going to be the greatest. It's already been proven to be true. And who knows? But um, I see a lot of positivity. But again, this couldn't. This could be the, the, uh, a pretty tough week. It could lead into the next week. But I do see a lot of fireworks. Uh, Q4, potentially into Q1. Uh, actually, I don't think everything starts in Q1 of 2022. I think fireworks happen in Q4, and I think they may continue all the way in Q1 2022. Let me just think about that in the comments section. I know there's a lot of information, but it's uh, hopefully it uh, eases some tensions. Let's uh, uh, finish off with a little retirement story follow-up. So uh, this was from, uh, actually I got this from James or Invest Answers, and that's pretty good information. Really what it says here is that there was a survey done Three quarters of Americans surveyed by uh, Natixis investment managers think that rising government debt will lead to reduced Social Security benefits, making it harder for four in 10 to make ends meet retirement. Four in 10 people say it's going to make a miracle to retire securely. That's sad, honestly. And most think private sector businesses have a role in helping Americans save for retirement. And I'm just going to challenge you like this. Uh, I don't believe that. I believe it's up to you to make sure that you are financially solvent uh, in your old age and your retirement. And if you haven't done that now, and this is not, this is financial advice. I'm gonna give you financial advice. At some point, you're, you're gonna have, it's all gonna come on you. So for all the things that you've done out there, it is up to you to make sure that you can retire with ease. You cannot rely on social security. That is not gonna be here in, in, as time goes on. And if you think the government's here to bail you out, they're not going to. That's why the government is not the greatest. So it's up to you. And uh, I can't tell you how to get there, but I can tell you what I do. And uh, to make it quite simply, I use iTrust Capital. And the reason why I use iTrust Capital, it's a 401k, it's a Roth IRA. The things that I put in there, as they appreciate, as they appreciate, uh, they do not garner taxes. So I put in there, it's, it's post-tax money that I've made. I put in there, I invest in the cryptocurrency. And then in the next 5, 10, 15 years, as I'm getting older, as I take it out, it's tax-free. And this is the same thing uh, that a lot of people have, have used in the past. Peter uh, Thiel is the one that put uh, his stock in PayPal and it turned into like under 107,000 7, of the stock. This is back in the 90s, turned it into billions of dollars. I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, but that's why I use uh, iTrust. There's a link in the description. looks something like this. And there's actually a video where I kind of break everything down as, as far as like a regular, a traditional, and a Roth IRA and how it all works, and a SEP IRA. And then also, just so you know, they're coming out with their uh, mobile app so you can trade. And what's pretty cool about this is that you can you can trade within your IRA and tax-free. So that's, I'll just leave you with that. Anyhow, uh, look, that's it for today. If you, if you stuck with me all the way in, it was over 20 minutes. I, I really appreciate it. This is a long one. Uh, if you like the type of video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And, uh, but that is it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.